ladies and gentlemen. He's a child of God, a husband, NRA conservative, radical right-wing supervillain, and Twitter rock star. American by birth, Texan by choice, and a badass by nature. He's the owner of TomOhalloran.com, OhalloranMedia.com, and PatriotRadio.net. Please welcome Tom O'Halloran. And good morning, America. This is Friday, but in a in a uh, in place of our usual jihad on America. Today will be a special edition of the Patriot Radio Show. Last night was the 10th GOP presidential debate right here in Houston, Texas. We'll be joined in just a couple of minutes, as we always are after a GOP debate, by my good friend, political guru Ken Crow. So welcome to the Friday edition of the Patriot Radio Show. I'm your host, Tom O'Halloran, and I'm broadcasting today from my underground bunker deep in Ark, Cantana, Nebraska, Colorado. Uh, please find us online. We are at facebook.com forward, spla- forward splash <laughs> forward slash Patriot Radio Show. You can find me online at facebook.com forward slash O'Halloran. And folks, I am on air five days a week. So if you're not listening five times a week, you're missing out. Please tune in 9 a.m. Texas time, Monday through Thursday for this, the Patriot Radio Show. On Fridays, same bat time, same bat channel, I almost always do Jihad on America, where I cover the Islamists in America, telling you who they are, what they want, and why you should be afraid. If you did not catch my show on the Muslim Brotherhood, my show Islam is not a religion, or my show on Islamophobia, then please find your way to PatriotRadioShow.com. Listen to all three of these shows. They will give you insight and perspective into the Islamic issue that you've probably not heard elsewhere. They'll also give you a solid foundation upon which we build almost each and every Friday as we continue to pull back the mask of Islam, looking at what's being done in the name of Allah, both here and abroad. And I do the news about Islam around the world, because it's a glimpse into the future of what's in store for us here in America, if we continue to allow the cancer of Islam to spread. Folks, keep abreast of the uh, archive shows. Listen to the archive uh, live stream and join the chat room conversation all at patriotradioshow.com shout out to everybody in the chat room Mike and Muriel Richard, Leah and my my youngest listener and folks 30 maybe 36 years from now 38 years from now mark my words we're going to have a presidential candidate by the name of Charlie And she will know what she's talking about. With that, I'm going to open the phone line, bring in our friend, Ken Crow. Good morning. Morning, brother. So we had another another debate last night right here in my backyard. And there (laughs) there seems to be a mixed bag of opinion on it. What are your thoughts? Oh gee, where to begin? <laughs> it was a it was a lot of fun actually. I it certainly was. the most entertaining debate we've seen so far. Well, less violent than the last one. The last one was entertaining, but it was like a bloodbath. It was last last night. Well, it was an attempted bloodbath. Right. 
Well, the first thing that comes to mind is very obviously Cruz and Rubio got together and choreographed an attack. I mean, that was pretty evident. Uh, Rubio did land a couple of punches on uh, Trump, no question about it. Uh, I think Cruz showed his desperation. He's he's in trouble and he knows it. Uh, particularly the after the debate interviews, he kept repeating over and over again, well, I'm the only one that's defeated Donald. Well, you, you defeated Donald through subterfuge and dirty tricks. You right. know, that's how you did it. You, you didn't actually do it heads up. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a trouncing. It was what, a two-tenths of one percent? Yeah, it was very small margin. Yeah. Just a couple of thousand votes out of a... Uh, uh, 200,000 right. cast or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, Cruz clearly showed his desperation. Mark, Marco didn't show quite as much desperation, but his, his demeanor and the way he came across was just totally unprofessional and unpresidential. Yeah. I think I think in the end both of them did themselves more harm than good last night. They they did not attack him on a professional level. Right. You know, the best Marco could do was come up with something about building Trump Tower thirty eight years ago and some Polish workers of which Trump never hired. Right. Uh, Research that this morning. That was on fact check. Right. That was a bogus a, a bogus claim completely. Yeah, he, he never hired those guys. It was one of his contractors that hired them. It ain't crazy. He didn't know who they hired. Exactly. And uh, So long story short, they were reaching and grasping last night. What's... What, uh, what struck the, the other one they got me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go what, ahead. What struck me the most, I think, was that this debate was held in Houston. My backyard, Ted Cruz's backyard, and Ted Cruz was for the most part sidelined on the whole event last night. He was so minimalized, he stood there listening to most of the show. Rather than saying, Hey Texas, wake up. Next week is your chance to put me in office. Yeah, you're right. He uh the the thing that struck me that I found extremely interesting was that both of them were going after Trump over his tax returns. And now what this tells me is, is that they are in desperation mode. They want to get their hands on those tax returns, rifle through them, find anything and everything they can to release it before Super Tuesday. And it ain't, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. There's, there's no reason in the world for him to do and, it before Super Tuesday. <laughs> well, he's not going to do it anyway yeah. until he gets darn good and ready to. Exactly. Because he's being audited. All he's got to do is turn around and say, my attorneys would shoot me if I did that. No, I'm not releasing anything until the audit's over with. Uh, but none of them ever released theirs either. And they wrote it off to say, well, we're both poor. We don't have nothing to release anyway. But we'll release them. Yeah. Yep, and uh, that was the hypocrisy was just overwhelming when it came to the taxes. And on the word but, hypo- on the word hypocrisy, I am beyond words disappointed with Mitt Romney. In 2012, Harry Reid stood on the floor of the Senate and used pure bullshit claims. I heard that he doesn't pay any taxes. I heard Mitt Romney does this. I don't believe he's done that. With nothing to back it up, just throwing mud at Mitt Romney. And then Mitt Romney turns around and uses the same tactic against another Republican? Well, that was done because Trump isn't one of the party boys. No, I, I get and why. They picked up I the just, phone I and just, they called Mitt Romney and they said, hey, can you help us out a little bit here? He goes, nah, problem, I'll do it. Yep, I get and why. They sent him out. I get why. I just thought he had more class than to do that. No, he doesn't like Trump. What do you think? 
<laughs> yeah, and, and, and this is very puzzling to me because for us to win, we're going to need everybody. Yeah. And that, and now you have Cruz and, and Rubio pulling their crap, and you have Romney pulling that crap, and it's, it's dividing the party horribly. And if this keeps up, we're, we're going to have deep, deep problems this November. Because contrary to what everybody thinks, Hillary is not going to be easy to beat. She is not going to be easy to beat. We will be darn lucky if we win this at all. And that's without all the bloodletting and the decapitations and the stabbings and everything else that's going on right now within the Republican Party. That's on our best day. We're going to have a problem to beat her. And right now, we're committing suicide. Yep. And it's tragic. I, and I don't like it one bit. My, I mean, you have families being pitted against families, brother against brother, sister against sister, and everything else. And no, everybody's standing their ground and nobody's giving in. Yeah. And something better be done. But, but last night's debate, I thought they treated Dr. Carson horribly. He had the uh, best line of the whole, he had the best line of the whole night. Would somebody, oh, would somebody please attack me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tweeted that out. That was a, and I said that was the line of the debate. Yeah. What a great line. <laughs> would somebody please yeah. attack me? <laughs> Where was he going with the flower bouquets, though? I didn't get all I of that. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He He was like off the rails there. I started thinking about Eagleton when he started that line. I'm like... Is this guy on meds? Yeah, really. Uh, Kasich, excuse me, repeated his same old dribble. Uh, didn't do a bad job. I, I think if anybody won last night, it was probably Kasich because the other three kept clubbing each other over the head, and Carson could only talk about flower bouquets. Well, Kasich, and if anybody Kasich, won, it was him. Kasich did well, but I, I think... And this is just me. I'm not a political guru, but I think Trump actually came out ahead. First of all, Kasich couldn't possibly win enough to make a difference for him. So that aside, well, that, that's absolutely correct. But last night was much like a boxing match when you go to uh, take on the belt holder, the world champion. Yeah, you you can't tie him or just barely win. You, you have to, it has to be very apparent. Right. And, and that wasn't there last night. I uh, thought, I thought Trump, you would have, I thought you would have been happy with Trump's la- re- responses last night. He didn't get angry. He didn't call anybody, well, he may have a couple of times, the liar thing and, and, and personal attacks. When Rubio started machine gunning insults at him, he talked right over Rubio, totally obliterating Rubio's message, and just taking charge of that whole conversation. I think he, he did, did and, and Trump last night did extraordinarily well in the face of everything. Yeah. I think the two kids made themselves look so bad last night that it made him look good. I, I did put out an article this morning. My closing paragraph was, okay, Mr. Trump, here's the deal. You're going to need to get really astute real fast. Because what last night did show me was that Trump's debate skills still made a lot of work. Yeah, he's getting and better. He's because getting... he kept saying things. Well, no. He kept saying things that left himself open. Oh, you mean like I can okay. make peace in Israel because I was the Grand Marshal in the Israel Day Parade? <laughs> exactly. And, I and love that line. You, you Hello? Can't, well, you can't, in, in debating, you can't leave yourself. Now imagine he ends up with Hillary, right? He's going to have to get to the point of where he does not leave himself open to where she can flip back around and go, uh, Mr. Trump. This is a lot more serious than a parade. 
and he ran marshal in your parade. We have a lot of people dying. Let me tell you how I'm going to do it. And what you've done is given her an opening to make herself look presidential and professional and make you look minimalized. And in professional debate coaching, they will teach him how not to do that. Yeah. And that's one thing he needs to work on. The next thing he really needs to work on, he did look bad at one point last night. And that was when they were talking about Obamacare. And all he could seem to say was, I want to open up state lines. And that's all he really had. And Kasich came out with a lot of data and Medicaid and talking about this, that, and the other. And that was presidential. Trump's line looked like he was searching and grasping for something to say. Again, back to debate training. Yeah. And and he needs to he, he needs to get with a debate coach and he needs to memorize some of his data on certain subjects. Otherwise I thought he did very well considering the circumstances. I think he did very well. Okay. I, I, I thought you'd be happy with it. Um, he didn't um, Oh yeah. He didn't just go off the rails on anybody. He did I like the way he over talked Rubio as Rubio was trying to get out a dozen bullet points on different things. He overtalked Rubio and just obliterated that message completely. He thanked Rubio for the book. <laughs> yeah, I, my favorite line was when he turned, or one of my favorite lines was when he turned, and he goes, but I helped both these guys. I wrote checks to both these guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know? My favorite. And they're standing there, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you fund liberal politicians. Yeah, both of these two. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Trump line of the night was when Rubio said, "You hire illegal aliens." He says, "I not only hire illegal aliens; I'm the only one on this stage that's ever hired anyone." <laughs> yeah. That was a that home was run. A, that was a perfect yes was. perfect answer. But you notice the liberal media. Yeah. Well, All the liberal media. Rubio won. Rubio I, won. I no, know, right? <laughs> Rubio made himself look like an idiot last night. Yeah. A yeah. desperate idiot at that. Well, he is desperate. It's his last shot. Um, sure. You know, if he doesn't pull Texas... He's he, he hadn't won a state. No. Nope. Rubio hadn't won a state. No. Nope. And he's not going to win one. And here's the thing. Heck, he came in second the place old, in Nevada, and he didn't even win a county. No. And uh, Cruz, they did the math last night. Trump's going to win all the other states. If Cruz wins Texas, he's still over 300 points behind. Even if Cruz yeah. wins Texas, yeah. yep. he, he's still suffering huge defeats. And after that, he's not going to win Ohio the week after. He's not going to win. There's another. See, the week after, next Tuesday, on the 15th, there's another uh, primary day. Uh, oh, they call it Little Tuesday or something. Anyway, there's like nine states up on that day. Yeah. And some of them are big states like uh, Michigan, Ohio, and states like that. Cruz isn't going to win any of those. Right. Cruz right. needs to go home. This is over. Uh, yeah. And, and, it's over. And, and definitely over if he fails to win his own state. Well, it's over even if he does. I just showed you. I mean, yeah. is this thing well, over? Yeah, but him? I mean, it's, it's, it's over for Carson two months ago, but Carson's still around. That's my point. I know. It's over. Well, but it doesn't Carson's... Mean... Yeah, Carson's having a good time. You know, he's a multi-millionaire. He's retired. Yeah. And he's out riding around visiting and having a good time. And he's still got a lot of money in the bank, so he can afford to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what Dr. Carson's doing. And he'll end up, you know, you never know. Trump may have pointing for something big. Secretary of Health and Human Services or Surgeon General or whatever, you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, he'd, he'd be good at something. Uh, it, it, you keep coming back to that Surgeon General. I, I, I think he'd probably be good at something bigger than that. But you, 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 oh, well, Secretary of Health and Human Services sure. and all that. Sure. Yeah, he, you know, he he's hanging around for a reason. He's got something in mind. Yeah. I'd like to see Kasich come in. But, you know, rather than VP, I'd like Kasich to be brought in to dismantle the IRS to dismantle Secretary or the uh, Department of Education to dismantle some of the government departments that we don't need and that could be trimmed to save a ton of money and send power back to the states. Casey could be good at all of that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's he, uh, that's right up his alley. You know, and Casey last night he he didn't take the bait and go for Trump either. Nope. Didn't do it. He, I, was, he stood over there and said, "Okay, I'll let the kids play." Yep, I would exactly appoint. Exactly what he did. I would appoint Kasich, Secretary of the Chainsaw. But did, did you see the way Trump stood? He stood tall. Yep. And they were pointing at him and shouting at him and all that, and he didn't respond. And uh, he waited until the appropriate moments, and then he would. He would flip around and say something. Yep. It, it made the other two, because he's considerably larger than they are anyway, yeah. six four or something. And it made them look small. Yep. In well, comparison to him, the 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 uh, the uh, what's the word? The optics. Yeah. Made made it made them look small. Well, I said I before found that to be very interesting. I said before you logged into the chat room this morning, I said that I thought Trump did very, very well, even though the media won't say it, and that I thought you would be happy with his performance because I know you've been disappointed with some uh, some of his performance in the past. Buddy, he was light years better than he yeah. was two months ago. And that's it. And every time he's up there, he gets a little bit better, and we don't always notice it because it's little steps every time he gets in front of the camera but every day I think this man is smarter than he was the day before every day I think he's more prepared every day I think he's more skilled at the debate process well one of the things that I really wish he would do let's take Israel for example is like every subject he'll try to come out with I built a great company I built a great company we know that, Mr. Trump. I think what I'd rather see him do there, if I were on his team, is what I'd let say to him. Turn around and look at those guys and say, look, I was in the private sector. If you've got a problem with Syria and Israel, you guys are the ones running the government, not me. I've been in the private sector. Yeah. You need to look at yourselves in the mirror. As for Israel, I love Israel. I, I love Judaism. The religion is one of the world's greatest and oldest religions. I don't have a problem with Israel. If you got a problem with ISIS and Syria and Iran, you guys did it. You're in charge. Rather than talking about his own government, his own businesses, yeah. I'd rather see him flip around. And if they're talking about mistakes and you're trying to blame me and say, I'm not staunch enough supporter of Israel, that's not my job. I'm right. not the government. Right. You guys are. Exactly. And the same thing, On they're always coming at him for his, his giving money to the Democrats for uh, supporting one side or the other. As a private citizen, he's got a right to do that. But you can... You can and this may be just me, because I know even some of my conservative friends disagree with me. I have no problem with somebody supporting um, the pro-choice, supporting, supporting Planned Parenthood, and then running as a candidate and coming out against it. Because as a person, I may feel this way on a topic, but if I am going to represent the people, and I know that the people in my district or in my country, if I know the people feel a different way. It's not my job to push my agenda. It's my job to represent 
the people that I'm there to serve. So I have no problem with a private citizen like Trump coming in and having a record on saying one thing and then coming out as a candidate and saying something else. Your thoughts? I, I, well, it does show a track record, though, of how you're going to lean on important manners. I think your history is always a reflection of where your future may be going. And that is why these cruise, I don't know, I'll call them cruisers or cruise crew or whoever, but uh, these guys are driving me absolutely spastic right now. Uh, They just all day long, every day, pound on, you know, uh, his, his record of passionate conservatism and blah 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 and no I don't have a problem with Trump giving money to charities like that or whatever he wants to it's his money I don't have a problem with him and I've said it a thousand times I don't have a problem with him giving money to Hillary when he did during her campaigns everybody gets upset at that they go well how can you give money to Hillary Clinton and still call yourself a conservative. Look, the guy was a businessman. Hillary was the U.S. senator. He wants certain favors down the road, or he may need help applying a little pressure to a governor for something, whatever. He's buying political favors. Look, it's the conservatives and the Koch brothers that got the legislation passed and then it went to the Supreme Court, and they wanted the Supreme Court so that people like Trump could give money for them. Right. I mean, they're the ones that took that to court. The Democrats fought it the whole way. Oh, sure. So you got what you wanted, people. You wanted to have access. You wanted your corporations to be counted as individuals for no campaign donations. Well, they wanted it you for them. It they wanted it for them, not for people like Donald sure. Trump. <laughs> Brother, we sure. got we got to take a quick break. Uh, can you stick around? Absolutely, if you want me. Oh to. yeah, oh yeah. I'd be sh- I'd be I'd be keel hauled if I had to take off the show in the middle of the show like this. Folks, stick around. This is the Friday edition of the Patriot Radio Show. I'm your host Tom O'Halloran, and then when we're on the air with our good friend and typically Monday co-host political guru Ken Crow. Stick around. We'll be right back. that time again. It's what you've been dreading all year. It can be confusing, difficult, even painful. It has driven countless people to worry and to despair. It's something you hate, but something you have to do. It gets under your skin, and it can get you in over your head. It is income taxes. Now it is easier. It is faster. It can make you happy. It is less expensive than H&R Block and TurboTax. It will get you your biggest refund faster. It starts free. It is efile.com. efile.com. We make income taxes fast and easy. How's it going, JR fans? Nick Labretti here, and today we're smoking the Oliva Cane Daytona. Another home run from the Oliva Company. Guys, this is the Cane Daytona. Medium to full body, Nicaraguan smoke, Habano wrapper on it, burns really, really nice. Hints of coffee, really, really creamy, flavorful smoke. This thing changes flavors on me four or five times throughout the cigar. It's excellent. Three words I would use to describe this thing, impeccable complex and out of this world that's more than three words stop counting 
We have three sizes, everything from a 46 to a 60 ring gauge. Get them right now at jrcigars.com. Hi there, my name is Mark Cranenberg and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to talk about my favorite order from Chicago State Company. It's the classic crime assortment. All right, well let's open up and have a look what's inside. So right away we've got two six ounce filet mignons. Uh, if you know anything about steak, it's really rare to see filet mignons with that kind of marbling in it. Just beautiful steak. And then next we've got the two 12 ounce USDA prime strip steaks. Just look at how thick these things are. They're just beautiful. Again, beautifully marbled, amazing steak. Then we've got two USDA prime ribeyes. And if you like steak that is just mouth-watering, this is the steak for you. With all that marbling inside, you'll see it's thicker. The marbling is a lot thicker. That just means more moisture throughout your steak. Now we've got six USDA prime top sirloin steaks. These are the steaks that everyone's gonna love. Then we're moving into our next package. Next we have 16 four ounce gourmet Angus steak burgers. These are amazing burgers that everyone's gonna love. And to top it all off, they give you one container of my favorite steak seasoning of all time, the Chicago Steak Spice, and you're gonna love it too. So there you have the classic prime assortment, my favorite and your ultimate steak experience. So be sure to order your steak today at MyChicagoSteak.com. I'm Mark, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time at MyChicagoSteak.com. Tom O'Halloran has a not-so-common-core spelling lesson for the Obama administration. Ready? There is no K in America. There's kids that can't pray in school, hundred dollar tanks of gas. I can tell you right now this country ain't, ain't supposed to be like that. No, that ain't my America, that ain't this country's roots. This is the Patriot Radio Show. I'm your host, Tom O'Halloran, and we're on air today with our good friend, Ken Crow, who usually joins us on Monday mornings for a uh, campaign update. I'd like to give a shout out to a new listener in the chat room, The Night Owl, who I believe it's The Night Owl Conservative on Twitter. Brother, welcome to the show. Generally, on Fridays, I do Jihad on America. It's an, about what's happening with Muslims, both here in the country and around the world. So I hope you tune in and listen to that on Fridays, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. It's generally this, the Patriot Radio Show. So we're going to go back to the phone and uh, pick up where we left off. Ken, are you still with us, brother? Yeah. I'm laughing. Everybody's winning the Nigerian lottery in the chat room. <laughs> I got to sit out here. $129 give me a social security right? number and address. Well, I just, and you, you can collect your money. I just posed the question wondering if all these Nigerian scammers might be making it difficult for the real Nigerian princes to give away their money. Well, I got bad news for you. He just screwed up. That's the wrong night, Al. This one's a lady. Oh. Well, how would I know? Thank you, you Lady just, Night Owl. <laughs> you just stuck your 
size 12 down your throat there, brother. No. Now, see, if it was a liberal, she'd be all upset and pissed at me. But liberals are liberals. And I thank God every day that God bless conservative women with a sense of oh. understanding and a sense of humor. Because if I was, well, if I made the jokes I make about women as a liberal, I'd be, I'd be tarred and feathered. Well, there you go again. See, now you assumed it was a man. You found out it was a lady. Now you're assuming she's not a liberal. No, I'm not assuming that because be. her Twitter handle is the Night Owl Conservative. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Which I always which saw the Night Owl. Which which I said in my intro. And if you okay. weren't watching the Hillary press conference, you'd you'd have heard that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I was not watching the Hillary press conference actually. But. What's she pressing about? I have What's no she idea. About? I have no idea if she's even on. I just wanted to throw that out there. But no, I, I knew oh, she, okay. I knew that the night owl was a conservative. So anyway, glad okay. to have you join well, us. Hello, sister. night owl. Welcome aboard. And let's see. Do, 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 do. She says it's okay. I should have lifted my skirt. She's going to flash. It. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, great. She we have a ra- we have a radio f- we have a radio flasher. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like my wife. I used to live on a sailboat in San Francisco, and my wife is a very very modest conservative. I mean, she'd go out on the deck of the boat, and if there were people around, she'd be wearing long pants and you know sweatshirt type of thing. One day, one day, one day we're out. One, yeah, right. One day we were out on the water, way, way, way out. There was no, you couldn't even see land, no boats around or anything. And she finally stripped down to a bikini. I'm like, wow, feeling real the exhibitionist today, aren't you? <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's funny. Anyway. Well, what do you want to discuss now, Migo? Well, let's t- let's talk about Texas. Real Clear Politics has Cruz Trump tied at thirty-two all. How do you think it's going to play out in reality four days from today? Wow! Yeah, and the the, the recorder is on, so this is this is for the record. No pressure. Honestly, I I gotta think Cruz is that they're gonna let the homeboy win. I gotta believe that. Gonna let the, the question? Yeah. Well, there. Yeah. I I gotta believe that. But then again, the momentum is with Trump, and people just people like to vote. There was a very interesting wild card thrown out yesterday. That I and I've known about it, and I've talked about it before. But the momentum, people don't want to vote for somebody they know is going to lose. It's just something inherent. Yep. You want to root for the winner. It, maybe it's an American thing. Maybe it's a I don't know. But the point is, you want to vote and root for a winner. You don't like voting and rooting for a loser. Exactly. And. Uh, the momentum is without question, and that's worth. Now the question becomes: How many points is that worth? You know, if you've got two teams that are equal, they'll usually give a three-point edge to the home team because they're the home team, and they've got a slight edge, even if the teams are equal in every other respect. Yeah. And so I'm wondering what the percentage would be for Cruz in Texas. And if it's only a couple of points, Trump's momentum may carry that. I'm honestly not prepared to speculate because I truly do not know. I just truly don't know. I know Cruz has a built-in home field advantage because he's got his machine in place in Texas that's there for his Senate runs and everything else. Sure. That that I'm sure by now is ramped up going full steam ahead. He's got offices open, you know, in Waco and Austin and San Antonio and everywhere across the state. I saw a uh, panel last night that they had in El Paso. Now, El Paso is typically a little more liberal than the rest of the state. 
and it was all Republicans, and they were at the Republican headquarters in El Paso. There's probably 40 of them in the room, and two-thirds of them went for Cruz. They did a straw poll. Um, but he, and I know Trump's machine, his ground force, is not as strong in Texas as it is in other places. Well, let me ask you. A, let me ask you a question. So, let me ask you a question. Cruz got swept into office, no doubt. He got swept into office by the Tea Party crowd. Okay. However, Krista, Krista, uh, what's her name that just went and joined the Trump campaign a couple couple months back? Katrina. Katrina. Katrina Pearson. Katrina Pearson yeah. was his spokesperson and probably had the most to do with him getting elected by rounding up all the Tea Party groups and get bantering their support, gathering their support for Ted Cruz. Two months ago, she went and joined the Trump camp. How much mm-hmm. of an effect? How much of an effect do you think that has? Because those people are probably still listening to her. How big of an effect do you think that will come into play when it comes time to pull the switch on Tuesday? Well, I'm sure it's going to have some effect. I do know that Trump is pulling. See, here's the thing. Trump is pulling, number one, to assume Cruz is going to win a state. Probably a good assumption, but... How many of those voters in that state are actually middle of the road Republicans? They're not going to vote for Cruz. How many are Democrats that have gone? Is my understanding in Texas, it's an open primary. You can be a Democrat, you'll vote for a Republican. Am I not correct in that? I believe so, but I can't swear to that. I believe you're right. I think you, yeah, I think you can. You, you can't vote but in one primary, but you can pick a primary and go vote in. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the case in Texas. So, how much can Cruz get the Tea Party to rally around him when part of that Tea Party... And see, here's the other thing. People are starting to see the handwriting on the wall. They know. And, and they know even if Cruz wins Texas, he's done. So, will they vote for Trump? They might very well do it. The longer I sit here and I work this through in my brain, I can see Trump winning Texas. I mean, from your lips to his ears, brother, I would love to see it. I would love to see Trump take Texas away from Ted Cruz. Well, if he does, he runs the table. He runs the table. There, there's yeah. no stopping him. If he take, and I don't see him being stopped now anymore. To be honest with you, I don't see anybody else who can stop him. So Cruz wins Texas. Kasich wins Ohio. Big deal. He's won everything else. Do you think Rubio will step out before Florida votes? He can't afford to lose in his own state any more than Jeb could. Well, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, if I were in his shoes, down 20 points in my home state, why would I want to go be embarrassed like that? Exactly. I I can't see that. And 20 points isn't something you're going to make up. You know, if it was five or even eight points, possibly be able to make it up and pull it out. Or lose by a short margin even. But to lose by 20 points, that's a butt-kicking that you really don't want to face when you're still a sitting senator. Well, say he's he can't run again. He's got to sit out one term, then he can run again. Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah, yeah they got that rule that you can't yeah. do both in one same year. Yeah, but I mean, and, even, uh, even, even that, if you've lost a presidential race in your home state. I think running for Senate or Congress or anything else would be an, up, would be an uphill battle. Don't you? I is. I, oh, well, yeah, sure. Absolutely. But I, I can't understand why he would want to go down in flames like that and be crushed like that. Yeah. 
you know, I would think that after Super Tuesday, if, if he doesn't pull something miraculous out of his butt Super Tuesday and pick up 200 delegates from someplace, you know, yeah, like seven second places or something, I, I think I'd throw the towel in. And if nothing else, call up Donald and say, look, I'm getting out of this thing. I'm going to be unemployed. Try to consider me for something down the road, you know, when you're elected. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to do the better part of valor and be a hero and get out of this thing. And support you. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah, you know, I've got to be unemployed, Donald. I can really use the job. Right. <laughs> and, he's got a, and he's got enough people that are supporting him <laughs> that he would be a valuable endorsement as well. Well, sure. Absolutely. Okay, let me ask you this. Given that, let's say he decides to pull the plug. He sees the writing on the wall. He doesn't want to go down in his own state. Let's say he decides to pull the plug. Would he endorse Trump, or do you think he would endorse Ted Cruz? Because his numbers would do Cruz a world of good as well. Nobody's going to get him yeah. all. Nobody's going to get all the all the, of... Rubio's supporters, no matter what he says, but if he were to endorse, then the person he's endorsing would probably get I would guess, what, two two thirds, maybe three fourths of them? It depends on if he's seeking a job or not. If he's not going to seek a job and he's going to go write a book and try to get a four million dollar advance to live on for the rest of his life, yeah, that's a different story, but if he... If, if if he endorses anybody and Carson's still in the race or Kasich's still in the race, I, I got to think he would endorse Kasich. I don't think he would endorse Cruz because then that means everything he said on the stage was a lie because he attacked Cruz, attacked Cruz, attacked. Well, how do you turn around and endorse somebody that you've been attacking for months now? Well, I don't see how you do it. Where, we, where would the you do it. where would be the advantage of endorsing? You're getting out of the race because you don't have a chance to win, and you're going to endorse somebody behind you. That doesn't make sense. Can I know, I? I know. Well, I know. I, I'm saying, how does he endorse Trump? Other than if he did it, he could do it if he did it under the banner of "I'm taking one for the team." I'm going to stand behind Donald Trump. He's going to be our nominee. Yeah. And we need to start unifying. Yeah. I, That's I hear, what he would I have hear, to I do. Hear, That's the only thing he could do. I hear America talking, and uh, I'd like to uh, yeah. to help Donald and, and, and work with him to pull America back to greatness or something. Yeah, that could be done. Yeah. That's the only way he could and, do and it. What, what if was, he doesn't do that, he's either got a not endorse. Or he's going to endorse Gates in one of the three. Yeah, yeah. Then, then we we just got that from uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Muriel in the chat room that he, he, agreeing that uh, his attacks on Cruz was too personal for him to yeah. uh, to, to him to cross that bridge again. So let's say he does. Let's say he he, he waits till after Tuesday, sees the writing on the wall, doesn't want to f- have. His butt kicked in his own state. He bows out and endorses Trump. How much, what percentage of Rubio followers do you think will actually fall in line behind Trump? A good portion of them. You're, you're going to have a few that refuse to simply because they're yeah. ideologues. Right. It, it's the same with Cruz. So you think it's, you know, you think, you think it's going to be more than uh, three-fourths then? Oh yeah! Oh nice. yeah! It'd be okay. Great force okay. easily. Uh, well, that because that pretty much seals the deal then. Because oh, with, absolutely. With, 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 yeah, with, if, if Rubio gets out and, and endorses Trump, it, it truly is over. With Trump sitting at thirty-five, um, all he needs from Rubio is the fifteen, and he's over the halfway mark. And boom! It's yeah. It's he could walk it across the fin- the goal line. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Oh. And and the funny part is, is he did it all on less than thirty or forty million. I know everybody else has spent nine digits, and and that's that's <laughs> that's everything. That's airfare and everything, isn't it? Because I don't. Oh think, yeah. He doesn't. I don't yeah, think he's, absolutely. He does, he's under ten million for advertising, I believe. Yeah, he was at eight last week. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you, you gotta love that. Just, the, just the opposite of didn't um, didn't Ross Pro dump a ton of money into his campaign? He tried to buy it. He, uh, he dumped, as I recall, around fifty million. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But you gotta remember, everything was a lot cheaper back then. Yeah, well, not well. The reason, the reason, the difference but, between them is nobody knew who he was. So he had to buy the name recognition. Trump doesn't have to do that. Trump is a celebrity going in. So I think Trump ought to have a little fun, put up a great big easel and a great big whiteboard, start drawing, and use a funny Texas accent and have a little fun. <laughs> and then somewhere in the middle of that say, we're going to make America great again because we're going to fix it. <laughs> We're now, fix it. the whiteboard just flashed something into my mind too many people are going most people would miss the whole um, reference back to Ross Perot they see the whiteboard they're going to think he's making fun of Carl Rove <laughs> well he uh he was definitely a character in his day, no question about that. I remember all the political cartoons with the giant ears on them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, he, he made it easy for the uh, cartoonists. Okay, here's another question for you. Trump wins the nomination. Who of the top-tier presidential campaign managers would go and work for him? Do you think Karl Rove would get in line? And would do a critical no. job. No, Carl Rove would would run the other way, and there's no way, no way Trump would hire Rove because of his ties to the Bushes. No way. Uh, Trump, for some unbeknownst reason, just he he's got a thing for George and Jeb. He just doesn't doesn't like them. And that was one of the things that kind of disturbed me a little bit last night was he did make a couple of really disparaging remarks about President Bush 43W with his dad sitting there. And that, that kind of bugged me a little bit. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, uh, that was that was uncalled for. I, uh, I knew his mother and dad was sitting up there and they just had to be cringy. But, you know, then again, they probably knew to expect it. Um, gee, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I really don't Do you know. think he will reach out and hire a new campaign manager since it's going mainstream like that? Or can his current guy that has gotten him here take him across the finish line? I... From looking at Corey's resume, I gotta say no. And to be honest with you, I think it's Trump's personality and charisma and anti-establishment rhetoric that's gotten him this far. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's been Corey at all. No, I think, I think he, Trump. I think Trump was right when he said, "No, I don't listen to these guys." <laughs> I think yeah, he, I think he was being absolutely uh, truthful there. He might have been, yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know. You know, in a couple of my articles, I beg you, go, go hire a manager that has yeah. managed a couple of successful Senate campaigns. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to hire any of the old stalwarts, go go get somebody like that. Let me, let me uh, ask you this. Do campaign there's so much involved in that. Sure there is. Well, once you leave the nomination process... You you got to have your act together. Yeah. You got to be firing on all cylinders. Yeah, now. you're in the bigs. Let me ask you this: Do campaign managers ever cross the aisle? You know who I like? I like the Louisiana, the uh, the, the raging Cajun, uh, Madeline. Uh, what's her name's husband? Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I like that old guy. Uh, I like. Uh Dick Morris, myself. I, I think Dick Morris 
even though he does have a foot fetish. Uh, remember, he got busted for licking some girl's toes and tying her toenails. Yeah. Uh, Whoopee. Yeah, well, he did. He, he got busted for that. You know what? I was talking to a friend of mine one day that ate dinner with him. They said he is an absolute pig at the dinner table. He orders steak and literally just has it browned on the outside. Yeah. He eats what's called a blue steak. Black and blue, brother. Black, black and blue. That's the way I eat it. What do you mean I'm a pig? And he eats, he eats it, and the blood will run down his chin and everything. And he eats with his hands. It's like the guy was never taught table manners in his life. Well, I've got manners, but no, eating it black and blue like that, have it black on the outside and bloody red on the inside, man, that's the only way to eat a good ribeye. Well, I prefer my medium rare to medium, but anyway, long story short, I think Dick Morris, if if I were going to run today, I would call him up. Pay Pay him whatever he wants. And then say we're we're doing this, brother. Yeah, I and it. pay pay him whatever he wants. Is he that good? He doesn't come across as a yes. very powerful as a very powerful person. No, he's a wizard behind the curtain. Huh. Okay, I know he, I know he's, he knows a lot of stuff. I've read his his stuff before, but he just doesn't seem to have the personality to to actually uh, run a campaign. No, he's quiet. He's real quiet, and he's real soft-spoken. But he's a genius. Huh, I'll be darned. Never he knew saved, that. He saved Bill Clinton's bacon on several occasions. Well, I, I, I've i heard that, but from him, and I figured he was probably just kind of fluffy. Look what he did. Look, look what he did with Clinton. Clinton lost his first four primaries. He got killed. Yeah. And he came back to win the nomination because of Morris. Yeah. Well, he hired Morris. Morris came in and totally restructured that campaign, and and they win. He remessaged him and everything. Well, maybe he'd be the guy then. Maybe. So you got to remember a lot of this. And campaigning is the messaging. Yeah. How how are you gonna gonna message this guy? And uh, and, and what angle are you going at? What what's your angle? What are you trying to you know? And and they've got him messaged right now. Trump is the anti-establishment, anti-Washington. Anti PAC, anti lobbyist, anti everything. He's the anti candidate. Yeah. Well, and uh, I just don't know. I'm sorry, my dog's found. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. James Carville, I, that's, I just that's the don't guy I like. Oh, James Carville, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Raging Cajun. Yep. But he really wasn't a manager, he was uh, more, more of a, stra- of a strat- man. strategist. Yeah, he was a strategist and a hitman for Clinton. Yeah. Remember, it's just all about sex. <laughs> Bill was just doing his job. It's just, he's married, he's, dead, he's a Republican. They drive like Republicans. All they care about is sex. We got bigger issues in this country to be worrying about sex. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. And you know, he turned America. They were ready to string Clinton up. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how many friends of mine I heard say, look, it's just about sex. It was just a, you know, it was just a, uh, I was going to use the letters for it. But, yeah, it, it, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, It's her stupidity for being in there, blah, blah, blah. He flipped all of America's thinking on that. Yeah. Except Kenneth Starr. Kenneth Starr's a communist. He just he he just after our president. Our president's a good man, and he just turning this thing into all about sex. Yeah, forget but it. We're still quoting him to this day. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I've I've always I've always enjoyed listening to him 
uh, rant and rave and kind of wished he was on our side. But, uh, brother, we're back at the top of another of another hour. I wish you a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on Monday. You too, my friend. We'll see you on Monday for the uh, Monday show, the the wrap up of the weekend events and a prelude to what's happening Tuesday sure. night. And then we'll count on you being in again on Wednesday because I think there will be some things. Oh, to talk. that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Do you think you'll have okay, any? Okay, I look forward to. Do it. you think you'll have uh, anything to say after the Tuesday primaries? Oh, we're going to be talking about Cruz flaming out in the South where he should have won and all kinds all of stuff. Flaming out in his own backyard. What flaming could be, out in his own backyard. What could be more Blowing wonderful? Up. What could be more wonderful? <laughs> all right, brother, you have a blessed weekend, all right? You too, my friend. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we always, always, always love having Ken join the show, my friends. This has been... The Friday edition of the Patriot Radio Show, a replacement show for our usual Friday Jihad on America. Folks, tune in Monday. Ken will be back with us talking about the lead-in to the Super Tuesday race. Talk about what's happened over the weekend as these races come to a head. God bless you and yours, America. This is Tom O'Halloran. I'm out. God bless you, Charlie.